Hey everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. I'm your host, Matt, and today we're taking a look at Divi 3.0. Just launched. It's the WordPress page builder I've always wanted with everything I don't. Coming up next. All right, everybody, today we're taking a look at Divi 3.0 and pretty much just taking a quick overview video of this. Um, many of you uh, WordPress purists out there are gonna be knocking at my door saying, why are you covering Divi, right? Why are you covering these page builders? And again, full disclosure, I do have a plugin that some, I sell a plugin called Conductor that sometimes gets confused as a page builder. It certainly is not, uh, certainly not at this capacity. Um, and many folks don't like recommending Divi or at least the older versions of Divi um, because of the theme lock-in and the uh, bad code that it produces. So Many of the WordPress developers out there and the software geeks are like, you know, you use a page builder, you're throwing all this bad code, you're throwing everything and the kitchen sink into a WordPress theme. It is bad. Why is it bad? Well, it's bad for performance reasons. Your page loads slow. It's bad for SEO. Your code is so, you know, convoluted, it doesn't get indexed well. Um, the user experience is all these buttons and functions and things you don't need being loaded and thrown at you. I get it. Uh, but from the WordPress end user point of view is they just want to be able to build a website uh, that they will that they like right and they want to be able to do that without having to go and you know dig through code and figure the and figure out you know code themselves or go and find you know half a dozen plugins and bring them in and understand that whole that whole ecosystem they just want something that they can just boot up and use on their WordPress site and just get the job done and I totally get it and Divi 3.0 uh, has been marketed as maybe it's going to be that solution. Like we're getting away from the bad stuff of Divi and maybe this new front end builder with all kinds of new awesome technology is going to work. Uh, not so much, and at least not so much out of the gate from what I'm finding. Um, I would love to have a page builder that does everything, that does it all in a beautiful, beautiful way that Divi does it. I think that their UI is great. I think that it's snappy and it's quick but it is just still very difficult to use, um, even for a WordPress professional like myself. I'm just gonna dive into, into that right now. So again, this is gonna be a quick highlight video. I'm gonna talk about some of the things I don't like, some of the things I do like, and I'll let you make your own uh, decision on it. If you want more videos of Divi, um, I'll, you know, I'll certainly give it a go. It's not something that I'm s totally sold on doing yet, uh, but if folks are out there want to watch this stuff, I will do more videos on that. So basically, I saw the announcement. I've been in their email campaign for quite some time. They do a tremendous job marketing, right? So I think they do a really good job at that. I see this landing page on their marketing site, and I say, I want to build that landing page too. How do I build the t traditional hero image? Um, you know, the three services below that and some staggering uh, highlights below. So I'm in, the, I'm in the visual builder already. And what I, what I do like, I, I love all, I love the UI. I think it's nice. I think it's pretty, but we run into some problems. And <laughs> number one, like, I like this stuff. This is cool, right? You can click on these areas and find all of this information. And, you know, I'm somebody who's against things like, like all of this custom padding stuff. I think for the beginner user, this stuff is just mind melting. And after some time, yeah, you can kind of learn it, you can kind of get it, but you know, inner shadows, parallax effects, custom padding, you know, all of this stuff really sort of just hurts people that just don't understand it. But I love the way they do their menus. <laughs> I love the way they do their menus. Um, I love that I can drag and drop this stuff around and it, and it doesn't feel heavy until you get into using it. So again, back to this image. How do I do this? I wanna do what this video is doing right here. So I played around with this for a little bit and this is stock Divi. So at first I said, okay, well, uh, I, I can see that this is an overall, you know, content section. I see this little column in here. So I say, all right, give me that image. So I click on plus, I say, give me an image. I go to image. This little window pops up. I go upload. I select an image I already uploaded and I hit save. There's my image. So then I start, okay, do I drag and drop that? No, I, I don't drag and drop the corners. So I can't make this bigger. So what I do is I say, give me the row settings. Uh, make this row full width. Yes. Okay, so it goes full width, but 
it's not full width all the way. Okay, so that doesn't work. So then I click on this again and I say, open a light box, no, no, no. Okay, so I don't, out of the gate, don't know specifically how to create that full width image, right? And I struggle with this for a little bit. So then what I found was you can add another uh, component down below. But the problem is I can't click it, <laughs> right? I'm full width. Full width to my to my screen right now, and I can't see. You can kind of see it. There's there's this other dock down here, and it gets in the way of this blue button right here. If I just hover over just enough, I can click it. So let's click that. And once I click that, all right, now I can see that I can add in some uh, a, what's called a regular section, a specialty section, or a full width section. So I'll click the full width section because. That's what uh, that video was showing before. So this pops up, I say, oh, there's my full width image. So I click on full width image and I go to upload. I'll select that image again. I'll upload the image and I'll save that. I'll scroll down and sure enough, there's my full width image. Now, I wanna get rid of this because I, I don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna close, I'm gonna delete it. And now you can see I still got this section up here. I can add another section up here. Or I can add another row there. We're gonna leave that hanging out there for a little bit. But again, I'm, I'm stuck with this, this UI where, again, when I watch this video, I'm, I'm looking at this stuff and I, and I see them dragging and dropping and making this stuff bigger, but I can't, I can't get down there. <laughs> it's just, it just doesn't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in some text uh, and full width post title. Um, I don't want to do that either. So how do I get text in this section? I can't, I can't put text in this section. So perhaps it is, uh, not what I'm supposed to do. So let me delete that. I'll go back over here. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to say background image. Oh, okay. So the background image here is what? I am supposed to put this background image on, uh, background color, video. Okay. I'm just going to hit save. And this section is still here. Okay. So I just tried dragging, dropping that didn't work. All right. So let me go to add a new row. And once I add a row, I can go and put some text in. So now I'm presented with another pop-up. This is all stuff I'm learning on the fly. So uh, this is my hero section. Okay, so I can barely see my text there and I am gonna highlight that. Uh, how do I make it bigger? Heading one. Okay, so I can make that hero one, but this font here looks way better. So save that. Um, do I change it here? I see. No, it only goes up to being that big, which is an H1. Interesting. So I have no idea on how to uh, make that font bigger. Uh, let's just try one other thing. I'm gonna add another section. Oh, that's a row. <laughs> you can start to see where the confusion comes in. So, ah, okay, now that I have a row, I can make this bigger. So that's kind of cool. I can drag and drop and make that bigger. But you can see I'm, I'm kind of just stuck on these, U, on these little pop-ups that come up and I can't really figure it out. I guess I can make that a little bit bigger. What happens when I drop? And it's just another row. All right, one last, uh, let's see, specialty, new module, no. Regular, full width, let's go regular. No, see, it's another row again. I just don't know how to make this text uh, bigger. I'm sure if I dove into the documentation, something would tell me, uh, but it's just not making sense to me right now on how to do that. So let's just move on to the next section. If I wanted to do three services, uh, I could do that. So. Let's just say I wanted to say my services above this. And do they do that here? They don't. They just say drag and drop, click. Okay. 
So if I go into these, this should be straightforward. I'd imagine I could do something like uh, text. Uh, again, this, I don't like how I have to type in here and then go to the left side or go to the previewer and do this stuff. But anyway, I get the, I get the idea here. I could just text again and service to, and one more time, text and service three. <clears throat> so service three. Uh, so great, I got that there. But again, I'm just faced with these. I guess I can do that. So yeah, I'd say that you're sort of, it's weird that that's already at max and then I have to sort of drag and drop it to snap it back. Um, so I guess you're sort of faced with making these decisions. And again, like, it just starts getting to be a lot of buttons everywhere. <laughs> uh, and I am a seasoned uh, user at this stuff and it becomes a challenge. So if I want to hit enter there and put an image above it, uh, I can't do it with this toolbar. Uh, I don't specifically know how. Okay, I see if I, no. Uh, okay, if I hover over this, this pulls up the graphic. All right, so. Let's just add that same image because it's the only one I have right now. Okay. So I could go through and, and, and continue to build my uh, services section out. Again, a little bit of a learning curve, um, but the UI gets in the way one more time. I'm going to do one more section here. Uh, I don't know what this purple one indicates. We get a blue one, green one. Uh, I do like that I can drag and drop this. It's kind of fancy. Um, let me add one more section. Let's go look at that specialty one. Um, this one just looks massive. <laughs> uh, so let's just click on this. Insert new row. We'll go full width. I don't even know what I'm adding. I'm going to go button. I'm just going to leave that button there. Um, and we got now a different color. So you really have to know what you're going with, right? You really have to spend the time, I'd say, to plan out a design like this uh, to try to achieve it. Um, and specifically, like, I don't see how they uh, achieve this layout, but just an image. And it looks like it's just floated to the right-hand side. I'm just kind of watching this graphic as it goes. Um, so you really have to spend some time planning out your site. And I'm sure there's maybe some templates that you can work with. But if you think you're just going to dive right into a blank canvas, it's just not going to be as easy as you think it's going to be. Now, other things that's, that makes it nice is once you do have your services sections down and you do want to sort of copy that, let's say I do want to make a, a copy of this or a duplicate, I can just click that duplicate and boom, it just makes another copy here and I can sort of go through and edit these as I, as I see fit for my next row. Um, and one other, you know, nice feature I feel is the add to the library. So you can save this entire uh, look and feel to your own library to reuse them as you move along. I think that's nice. I mean, I think once you do spend some time, because it will take some time building these layouts, uh, you can um, you can certainly save that to your library to repeat them. Uh, but a lot of these bigger builder sections, like the very common design sections, like the heroes and the services and those staggered images, I really wish there was a better way to do it. Um, you know, in fact, like we do it with, with our themes, but there isn't. And I'm not saying that because I have my own product. I just, I mean, you saw me sort of struggle through that. I wasn't even, I wasn't acting. It's me really trying to figure this stuff out. Maybe you have some, your own comments below that you can add uh, if you're a Divi user. You know, so things I do like, again, snappy interface, but it just does get in the way with too many buttons. I love the save the template thing. I think that totally makes sense. Um, but customizer stuff, I don't really care for. I don't like how they change the name from theme customizer and module customizer because, again, it's just a, a lot of stuff once you get into it. And I'm not even talking code that's being generated here when you build your site, just all of these options. One thing that drives me nuts is I can't find a way to stop this top nav from shrinking down and animating my logo because I feel like that's such an opinionated thing and it's not something I want the theme to do all the time. 
Um, perhaps my logo doesn't look good when it shrinks, or I just simply don't want it to. And I, I do want my navigation to be this tall. Uh, I feel like that's a very opinionated thing, and I, I don't like how they build that in. And I couldn't really, for the life of me, figure out how to... Uh, let me just save this. This is the other weird thing about saving. Like, you have to open this dock up down here and then hit save. Um, and I miss that a lot, uh, trying to figure out how to use this stuff. Um, but I, what I also do, and I'll add another thing I do like, though. Uh, I do like the editing history. Uh, good job on that. I can kind of go ahead and, and roll back and find these changes. So I do like that. It's a nice touch. Back to the theme customizer. Couldn't for the life of me figure out how to change this logo. Um, general settings, site identity, site icon, but that's for the icon. So you see my site title, it just says testing site. And then when I go to the header navigation and I go to, uh, let's see, when I go to hide logo image, it hides the logo image, but it doesn't show the testing, the site, uh, testing site name, which sort of drives me bonkers. Um, because it should just, if I hide the logo, the graphic logo, image logo, it should default to the text site name. Kind of drives me nuts a little bit. Um, you know, th these things are nice. Enable vertical, and, you know, if you want to make these big changes to your site like that, you can do that with a touch of a button. But I, I just don't know how to stop that animation effect. Um, let's just see if it's here. Drop down menu, fade. Uh, nothing with the animation, nothing with the animation. Uh, so I find that very opinionated too. Like I don't want that happening all the time and I have no idea, um, where to do it. Fix navigation settings, hide logo image. Okay. That hides it, but I don't know how to, uh, how to enable a fixed navigation setting. Maybe go to general settings. Layout settings, enable box layout. That just does the box. Nope, still can't figure it out. All right, anyway, not going to spend too much time on that. So still a lot of options here to play with. I think the mobile style stuff is cool. You can kind of figure out what you want on the mobile devices, especially if it looks like crap like this. You can fix it, <laughs> hopefully. Um, so that's nice. Uh, but there's just a ton of options in this theme. And again, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for an all-inclusive thing, the trade-off is... Tons of things for you to go through um, and potentially some bad code on the front end. Again, I know the previous versions of Divi uh, are sort of renowned for the uh, non-optimized code uh, from some of the purists out there. Um, and I don't know what 3.0 is looking like yet. But again, if you go into their module settings, you can kind of customize all of this stuff too, which uh, becomes quite a beast uh, once you get down to it. So if you're heavily customizing away from the core Divi theme, it's going to take you some time. Um, and if you're a newbie at this, you're probably best served hiring a professional or finding a theme uh, that does it near, you know, 90% of what you're looking for, a different theme. So that's Divi 3.0. I hope I shed some light on folks who are looking for some information on it. Again, I'm sure there's a lot of folks who are out there who use this product and love this product. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Go ahead uh, and drop a comment in there. It's PluginTut.com, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you like content like this. Upvote it, share it with friends and family. Thanks, everybody.